Hey guys, welcome back to Srishti Tech Academy. In today's video, let us learn about the most commonly used annotations in Spring, REST API and MVC. I have listed out all the annotations and I am explaining the purpose of each annotation. Together with this, I am also showing you the real code where exactly these annotations are getting used. If you guys are having any questions in these annotations or if you want to learn more, please share it in the comments. Okay, now let us get started. Okay, guys, I have already shared a video on all the annotations relevant to Spring Data JPA. Now it is time for us to understand the annotations that are used together with Spring REST API. Okay, the first annotation is add controller. A class that is annotated with add controller will behave like a Spring MVC controller. The methods within this class will return the view page name. Let me show you the example for this. This is my MVC application. Here I have a class that is annotated with add controller. This behaves like a Spring MVC controller. All the methods will return the view page name. Here success is not the response data but it is the view page name. It can be HTML or JSP or Timeleaf or Velocity or any other view page name. We will see the next annotation. The next annotation is at rest controller. You all know about this annotation. This annotation marks a class as rest API. This is a combination of at controller and at response body. This means it will return the data in the response directly. The data will be returned in the form of JSON or XML or any custom format. Let us see an example. This is an example. Here I have a class that is annotated with at rest controller. So this is a rest API. It has got many methods. Each method is a rest endpoint. Each method returns the data directly. In the first case, the first rest endpoint returns string data. The second rest endpoint returns a list of string objects. The third rest endpoint again returns a string data. Let me click on this rest controller. We can see this annotation. It is a combination of at controller and response body. It means the data is returned directly in the response body. Let us see the next annotation. At response body. This is used when you are working with Spring MVC application. If you are using a rest controller, already it is a combination of controller and response body. But in case of MVC application, we are having our class annotated with add controller. Here all the methods will return the view page name. What if I want to return the data directly? So in this case, you need to use response body. See here, if you are annotating a method with add response body, the return data will be returned to the response body directly. It will not behave as a view page name. Rather, it will be the response body. Let us go back. Let us check this out. This is my MVC application. The class is annotated with that controller. Here, in the first method, I am returning a value. In this case, it is the view page name. In the second case, the method is annotated with at response body. It means you are not returning the page name. But you are writing this data in the response body. What the client sees now is the value that you are passing. That is he will see success as the output. The next annotation at request mapping. It can be used with MVC application and REST APIs. It handles the HTTP request that uses any HTTP method. Let me just show it to you. Here you can see the method is annotated with at request mapping. The URL pattern is green. The HTTP method is get. If you want to use any other HTTP method, all of them are available over here. They are public static final values. The next annotation, get mapping. It handles HTTP requests that uses HTTP get method. Post mapping uses HTTP post method. Put mapping uses HTTP put method. Delete mapping uses HTTP delete method. Patch mapping uses HTTP patch method. 
The difference between put mapping and patch mapping is in case of put mapping, it is used to update the complete resource. If you want to update only one or two properties of your resource, then you need to use patch mapping. Post mapping is used for creating a new resource. Delete mapping is used for deleting a resource in the backend. Get mapping is used for retrieval. Okay, let me show you an example with all these annotations added in a REST API. Here I have a class that is annotated with that REST controller. This means it is a REST API. We have got many methods. It means all these are REST endpoints. The method that is annotated with post mapping is used for adding a new resource in the backend. The method that is annotated with put mapping is used for updating the existing resource in the backend. The method annotated with delete mapping is used for deleting a resource in the backend. The method annotated with get mapping is used for retrieving the data from the backend. The method annotated with patch mapping is used for updating few properties in the backend. The next annotation. At request param, it is used for binding request parameters from the query string to method parameters. That is, whenever you want to retrieve the values from a form that is using get method, we can use request param. Request param can be used with MVC applications and also with REST APIs. Let us see an example. This is my REST API. Here I have a method where I am trying to retrieve the data that is coming from the form. That is the form that is using get method or the data that is coming in the query string directly. This is my query string, whatever is after the question mark, username equal to user id equal to. To retrieve the data that is coming in the query string, I need to use a request param annotation. If the form field name is same as that of the parameter name, I don't have to pass anything together with request param. But if the form field name is completely different from the parameter name, to do the mapping, I need to pass it within parenthesis. This is for REST API. The same thing you can do it for an MVC application also. This is my MVC application where I want to edit a book object. The data is coming from a form which is using get method where I am trying to retrieve it using request param. The form field name and the parameter names are same means you don't have to add anything within the parameters. But here book id, the form field name is same. For author, the form field name is author name. To do the mapping with the parameter, I have passed it here. This is for request param. Next is at path variable. This is used to extract the values that is coming from the URL directly. We use this annotation usually with REST API. This is my REST API. Here I have a method where the data is sent in the URL. The data that is coming over here is Priya. That is captured using username which is passed within curly braces. Now within the method add at path variable annotation. Now here the URL name is same as that of the parameter name. So I don't have to pass anything within parenthesis. I can directly do the binding. I have got one more method where the data is sent in the URL. The data is Priya and Vuti. To match this, we have framed the URL all by ourselves. To retrieve the data, we are using at path variable annotation. Here, the URL name and the parameter name are same. We don't have to do the binding. It will happen automatically. In the next case, the URL name is different from the parameter name. So explicitly we need to use, do the binding with path variable. So this is for path variable. Path variable is used for retrieving the data that is coming in the URL directly. The next annotation at request body. It is used to bind the request body into Java object. This annotation is used in REST APIs that uses post mapping and put mapping. Let us see an example. This is my REST API. Here I have a method that is annotated with that post mapping. To retrieve the data that is coming from the body part of the request, use at request body annotation. Same is the case for put mapping. Here also the data comes from the body part of the request. 
to retrieve it use at request body annotation the next annotation at exception handler whenever you want to handle request specific to a controller use methods that are annotated with at exception handler this can be used in mvc applications and also in rest apis let us see an example this is my rest api here i want to handle a specific exception book not found exception so i have created a method that is annotated with at exception handler explicitly to handle book not found exception so this is the purpose of exception handler whenever you want to handle specific exceptions in controller you can create a method that is annotated with at exception handler the next annotation at controller advice whenever you want to handle exceptions from all the controllers we will be creating a class that is annotated with at controller advice this is also called as a global exception handler when you are working with rest apis there are few common exceptions which can occur in any rest api so to handle all those kind of exceptions in one specific place we are creating a class that is annotated with at controller advice let us see an example this is my rest api application here i have created a class that is annotated with at controller advice it is used for handling all the exceptions from all the controllers if you want to handle exceptions like request method not supported media type not supported missing path variable you can extend response entity exception handler to handle all these exceptions together with this we can also create our own methods that are annotated with at exception handler to handle our own user defined exceptions so this is the purpose of at controller advice the next annotation at valid and at validated whenever you want to do spring validations for request body and method parameters you can use these two annotations they can be used both in spring mvc and spring rest api let me show you an example of at valid annotation this is my rest api here i am having a method add employee to add a new employee object to the database we are retrieving the data from the request using at request body annotation together with that we are using at valid annotation to validate the request body with what will we validate for this we need to add few annotations in the employee class let me click on this employee here i have added few annotations the name should not be blank should not be null the employee id's minimum value should be 10 the age should be minimum 20 max 60 if the age is beyond 60 we will get the validation error message the error message is this similarly for age salary password you can add the appropriate annotations to validate the request body that is coming inside the rest api the same thing can be applied for spring mvc also okay whatever annotations we have seen till now at request param path variable request body exception handler controller advice valid and validated all these can be used together with spring mvc and rest api the next one is at model attribute whenever you want to bind form data or query parameters to model object we can use at model attribute annotation that is if you are retrieving a data from a form that is using post method directly we can use at model attribute to retrieve the data into a model object directly let me show it with an example this is my mvc application here i have a method to add a book to the database now the data is coming from a form which uses post method if i am using at model attribute annotation automatically the data from the form will be attached to the model object in our case the model object is book one thing you need to remember is the form field names and the instance variable name should be same if they are same using at model attribute the binding will happen automatically the value of the form field will be transformed to the instance variable name that you have got in your book class so that is the purpose of at model attribute to bind the values of the form fields into a model object and populate the model object when you try to print the book object now you will get all the values that the user has typed in the form 
The next annotation is add session attributes. Whenever you want to maintain session in a web application, you need to use HTTP session interface. You need to create a HTTP session object and using that you will maintain the session. In case of a Spring application, if you want to maintain a session across multiple pages, you can use add session attribute annotation. Let me show you an example. Here we have used add session attributes above the class within which I have passed book. From where am I getting this value? Already we have seen that I have used at model attribute. Whenever the data is coming from the form, the data is captured by model attribute and it is populated to the book object. After it is populated to this book object which is our model, the name that is given is the name that you have added over here. So the model attribute is book for which I want to maintain the session. So I can pass this directly within the parenthesis. So this is how you maintain session. This means whenever you want to maintain session in a Spring MVC application, you can use at session attributes annotation and pass the object for which you want to maintain the session. The next annotation is at response status. It is used for setting the HTTP status code for the response. Whenever you are returning the data in the response, you all know by default it is 200 OK. If you want to give a different status, you can give 201 created in case of post mapping, 202 accepted in case of put mapping. What if you want to give a response status in case when an exception occurs? So you can add this annotation above the user defined exception class. Let me show you with an example. In my REST API, I have my own user defined exception, book not found exception. If this particular exception occurs, I want to give my own status code, that is HTTP status not found. So, annotate the class with at response status. Pass the status code that you want to send. And what is the reason for this exception? The reason is book not found. The next annotation is at cross origin. This annotation enables cross origin resource sharing CORS for APIs. Whenever a third party application is trying to call your REST API, you should allow that particular URL to access your REST API. So for this we are using at cross origin. Let me show you with an example. Here I am having a controller class which is a REST API. This class can be annotated with at cross origin. This is an annotation which can be added above the class or above a particular method. I want to allow access to the external applications which are coming from the URL 4000. So that is what we have given over here. Only the applications that are coming from this particular URL can access this particular REST API. Other applications cannot access this REST API. This is a string array so you can pass any number of URLs that you want. You are providing permissions for those URLs to access your REST API. This annotation can be added above a class or above a particular method. Above a class means all the REST endpoints can be accessed from this particular URL. Above a particular method means only that particular REST endpoint can be accessed from the external APIs. Okay, I hope it is clear. These are the annotations that are used most commonly in REST API and MVC applications. Guys, I am conducting a weekend workshop on building a Spring REST API from the scratch where I will be discussing about what is Spring, how to build a REST API, how to perform CRUD operations with the REST API and also how to containerize your REST APIs. All this as a practical hands-on session which you will be doing together with me. If you guys are interested to join the session, please comment interested. I will share all the details to you. That's it. Thank you.